G'day again guys. Oh, it's good to be back. It's been about four months since I made my last video for you guys and I've really, really missed it. Um, of course, I've been really, really busy. Um, I've been at work and uni's been taking up all my time, but there's been one really, really big reason that I haven't been able to make videos for you guys and I think it's about time we talked about it. I'm going to get to that, but you don't want to look at my face the whole time, so let's get into the artwork. Alright, so I've been making videos for YouTube for about five years now, and in all that time I've been really hesitant to talk about this, because once I point this out, you will notice the way it messes with my speech in so many of my videos, but here we go. Now, for the last 20 years, I have suffered from a chronic pain condition that makes it incredibly painful to speak. And for the last four months, it has been absolutely kicking my ass. Now, this condition is called trigeminal neuralgia. And in my particular case, it's caused by a nasty little extra vein in my brain that really isn't supposed to be there. It's been there since I was born, pushing and rubbing its way on my trigeminal nerve, which is one of the major facial nerves. Now, essentially, all of this rubbing wears away at the nerve and causes it to short circuit <laughs> every time I swallow, touch my face, go outside in the wind, brush my teeth, <laughs> um, and unfortunately, one of my biggest triggers is talking. Now you can see how this might be a trouble for uh, somebody who wants to make YouTube videos and never wants to shut up. Now sometimes this pain can be just a little twinge or sometimes it's a, a burning sensation or sometimes it can be really extreme like being smashed with Thor's hammer <laughs> repeatedly lightning bolts to the face extreme which is unfortunately what I've been dealing with for the last four months. Now, over the years, I've learned a lot of little ways to try and avoid triggering off this pain when it flares up. I drink with a straw out of the other side of my mouth. I cut my food up into tiny, tiny little pieces. And I talk a little funny, trying not to touch my lips together when I'm saying my P's and B's. But I really can't do that too much when I'm talking to you guys. I already have a pretty strong Aussie accent, which might be a wee tad difficult for, for people from other countries to understand. I do try to dial down my natural Steve Irwin-esque accent as I speak. Because I do recognise that I am speaking to a very international audience here. And I have to speak as clearly as possible, because there's no point me doing all of this yapping if most of the world can't understand what I'm saying. So when the pain gets bad, I usually just have to grit my teeth take a deep breath and speak as normally as possible into this microphone. Now, of course I don't have to do this, but I love it. I love sharing my art with you. I love sharing the stories that come behind them with you. And making these videos feels like part of the process of creating the art for me now. And maybe I'm a bit stubborn, but I don't want some stupid nerve to stop me from doing everything and everything that I bloody well want. I'm definitely stubborn. So why am I telling you all about this now? Well, like I said, this condition has finally gotten out of hand. My stubborn will to plough through on regardless has unfortunately hit a big fat brick wall. And after 20 years, I finally hit my limit. It started while I was working on this piece. The usual background of pain started to pick up a notch. And that's not unusual because this condition can come and go for many, many people. But it was so poorly timed. You see, I had just been invited to participate in a group exhibition uh, featuring animals from the local area and supporting a local wildlife rescue charity. I was so excited to tell you guys all about it. I was planning on talking about this exhibition, all of the awesome artists that were involved, the work that the charity was doing, um, and inviting some of you who are local enough to come along and have a look. But none of that was going to happen. Instead, as I finished this piece, this giant piece, um, the pain was too much for me to speak. And I was just going to wait a little while, wait until it lessened off a bit so I could uh, make, it, make the video that I wanted to make. So I waited, and I waited, and, and 
only seemed to be getting worse. But I figured it would back off eventually, so I completed another piece, uh, which I made using pastel pencils on some pastel mat. I will show you that one in the near future. But even after finished that, the pain was still getting worse. Now, I did complete a piece for Patreon, uh, in which I was able to record a voiceover, but I did it only by talking very quietly and with some very heavy editing and with an effort that left me physically and emotionally drained, which sounds ridiculous, but I'm sure any of you who suffer from any kind of chronic pain condition will understand that feeling completely. Even though this was still getting worse um, and I was taking more and more medication, it just, it just wasn't touching it. Now, traditional pain medications don't work for this pain, this kind, this kind of nerve pain. Even the strongest opiates just make me feel sleepy and sick and still in pain. So I take anti-seizure medications to help, but it was seeming like the one that I have used reliably for 20 years <laughs> no longer helped. So it got to a breaking point. After five days at constant waves of <laughs> level 10, level 10 pain, um, I tapped out and I went to the emergency room. And look, they were fantastic. They threw a bunch of new medications my way, a bunch of them. <laughs> and I spent a few nights in the hospital waiting for them to start working. And oh, what a roller coaster that's been. My pain has gone down and you may hear that I'm speaking quite well today. But oh, I was super, super duper whacked out on these new medications. Suddenly I had double vision. Um, both of my eyes were working, but my brain just kind of wasn't putting the information together and I've developed a funny little twitchiness especially in my hands now even though the pain's at the lowest it's been in two years how I can barely function like this and how can I possibly art like this if I can't see now thankfully over the last couple of weeks I do seem to be getting a little bit more used to the, the uh, new medications my double vision is kind of all but gone except when I move my head too fast and I only twitch occasionally, but uh, I don't think this can possibly be a permanent solution. Now, fingers crossed there is something that can be done. I've been speaking to a neurosurgeon and in the next eight to 12 weeks, I'll be having a procedure done to, well, cook the nerve. Um, it's a bit scary. The plan is to numb my face, but you know, it's not so easy. Might not work. <laughs> might not last and it might make it worse <laughs> but I do have to try this if I am going to be able to live <laughs> work and most importantly make art oh I hate it this wasn't the story I wanted to tell with this artwork I really wanted to tell you that this is the largest colour pencil piece that I have ever made 16 by 20 inches on pastel mat Ah, oh, it's huge. And I didn't use any odorless mineral spirits in this piece. I didn't want to accidentally blend those blacks and yellows together into a greenish smoosh. So I worked this entire 16 by 20 inch piece dry the old fashioned way. And oh my God, those feathers nearly killed me. And of course, I really wanted to tell you about how much I love how this one turned out. Although I say that a lot. It took me so many hours to complete and I was so tired of those feathers. At, by, at the end, I didn't even film the last few feathers, mostly because I had to change my entire setup to fit the piece in frame. But, oh, <laughs> so worth it. Let's take a look. Okay, so here's the final piece. And can I even fit that in the frame? I gotta get right back here. Oh my goodness, 16 by 20 inches, all framed up. It looks fantastic on the wall. It just has so much more presence and I think I really like working at this size. What have I done to myself? And here's a closer look. I hate having to tell you guys this story. I'm just here to have fun with some artwork and give you guys a few tips along the way if you're interested. 
But ultimately, this is why I'm never going to be a big YouTuber. Sometimes it just hurts too much to please the algorithm. But no matter how long it takes in between videos, I'm still going to be here, plodding along, sharing my art, and telling my stories in my own pace. I would just like to give an extra special thank to my patrons. I may not be pumping out the six videos a week that you guys deserve right now, but your support has been amazing and I would like to thank you from the absolute bottom of my heart. So I'm the kind of person who gets very interested in learning about medical stuff. So if you're like me, I have linked a few less personal and much more informative videos about trigeminal neuralgia down in the description. Unfortunately, I'm not special, and many of you out there are experiencing your own painful and limiting conditions. If anything, I hope this story encourages you to plod along and do the things that you love as best you can. As long as you're having fun, the time limits can be damned. For me, I am back at the drawing board and the microphone right now. So if you would like to see some more, then why not hit that subscribe button and maybe ding that notification bell so YouTube can let you know when I get around to uploading. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys again soon. Bye guys.